welcome back guys I still have a little squealing in the morning I got you know working on this and we replaced that tensioner which was leaning back like it looked like it was touching and this little chattering going on and so the belt I think is a Gates or Daco I can't remember but I had purchased that new not that long ago so I didn't think it was a belt it sounded good we didn't know if it was the alternator we tested the alternator you know the saga continues here well there's a weep hole behind this water pump and it's damp and I put a pry bar between this lug right here and I pried on this and there was a little bit of movement I can't really do it by hand sort of feel it but not really so I got thinking maybe it's the uh, water pump well the trucks a hundred and seventy I don't remember five almost thousand miles on it the original water pump so it's probably due I've seen videos where the veins go bad and they scrub you know the bearings are gone and the veins are scrubbing on the inside of the pump and if you look over here I don't know if you can see it I shown a, a bright light around it looks like little metal filings and I was like hmm maybe the bearings gone on it early stages and um, you know it's coming up out of that hole there there's an access hole on the top which is strange most of these water pumps have a, a weep hole on the bottom and it leaks out hard to see. This one leaks out at the top and um, you could also get debris down in there. I don't know if that's a good design. So what I did is I went on, I looked for water pumps. They range all over in prices. I found a $26, $24, something like that. I don't know, some off-brand Chinese and I got thinking I better not. So I found a, a motorcraft for $51. And I said, well, I better get the motorcraft. Still not a lot of money. I need to have my truck work. And I got some towing to do. I got some trailer work. Got to tow the tractor to a job. I really don't want this thing to go bad on me here. The breakdown is going to cost more for a tow job than it would be to replace these parts. Is that how I justify it? I don't know. I used to have really good hearing. Now I got to use a stethoscope. I can set it on the bolt that's stationary, but obviously these all spin, and so you can't tell where that sound is coming from. It lasts for about, I don't know, 15 to 30 seconds, usually when it's cold. And then as it warms up, I don't hear it anymore. So it could be my ears that it's there all the time. I did have Dawson listen to it, and he thought it was in the alternator. That's why we went toward that. It could be a vibration going all the way around things here. But anyways, I ordered a water pump, and I ordered a kit. And then the kit gives these uh, pulleys. We got two metal idlers and one groove pulley down there. And I thought I replaced these pulleys before. I can't remember. I didn't find my service chart on it. I usually write everything down. I thought I replaced them. I know I replaced the belt. There are no cracks in it. It's dry. There's no goop on it. Um, but these chatter marks here, are, you know, you can feel them. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and put them on. It came as pulleys and a belt in a kit. And I said, well, I better go for it. I already did the tensioner. So... I've got the uh, radiator pet cock loose and a hose on it going into a bucket. I want to save all the antifreeze I can, keep this as clean as possible. I'm going to go ahead and take the belt off, get it out of the way because you don't want antifreeze to get on the belt. And prior to that, I might as well zip off these pulley bolts on the water pump while there's a little tension on it. Looking in here, looks like all 10 millimeter. And then I need a, a breaker bar or ratchet 
again for this tensioner and these pulley bolts here look like they're 13s so I'll probably get probably get the ratchet out for that and that's about it I'm gonna drain as much antifreeze out of this as possible still gonna lose some so I'll put some catch cans under there the fluid in this uh, I replaced a couple years ago and I think I set it for I think I wrote it down here somewhere on something here it's like 34 below or something but we'll check that if it needs more we'll put new in it so as I'm draining this a real hard spot to get at and here's the bucket these little recyclables I put a quarter inch piece of hose I had on the pet cock up in there you can see it, it's red I don't know if you can see it tough spot to get at but we're draining this down I got about a gallon out of it I'm gonna to try to get it all out that will and I'll go gather some tools should be memorizing all these right we got to take the air filter get this out of the way eight millimeter take this air horn off goes to the throttle body here and then over here is the mass airflow get this out of the way so we can do the pry bar I don't know trucks cost me a little money I guess if I took it into the shop, they're talking, you know, four or five hundred bucks put a water pump in. That's a little bit ridiculous. I think we can handle that, guys. So we'll get the air horn up out of the way here. Give me some working room. I think I can I think I can get in here with this little Ryobi ratchet. Ten mil, right? See if it's strong enough. I don't know. I gotta break them free here. Yeah, I think it's original water pump. I'm gonna get a pry bar and hold the bolts. See if I can get these out here. Which one do I want to leave in there? See if they're all the same length. And the ones underneath it here, where is it? It's down there somewhere, where is it? Is that it? And then one, two, three, and there's one on the top. So I got three super loose. The other one I want to leave in there in case it wants to fall out on the ground, which I doubt. Those two bolts are the same. Let's see what the bottom one is. You don't ever want to put a short and a long or a long and a short. Those three are the same. And then oh, I'll put them in my parts bucket. And then there's some filth on it. Let's see if we get down in here. Let me get out some air and blow that off. I don't want dirt in there. Let's see if I can get them now. I broke it free with a bar between that bolt there. 
and the pulley being released. And I got a magnetic tray here. I put my bolts in. We don't want to lose them. Ugh. This doesn't look like too bad of a job. It looks like it's just four bolts and a O-ring. I don't see any anti-seize on these. And the bolt heads look like they, you know, were never touched. I've had the truck for, <laughs> I forgot how long now. I gotta remember, it's a 2010. I don't know if I've had it. I might have said seven years, but it might be longer than that. And so, I doubt it's had a water pump. Hopefully it says Motorcraft on it. So we got all them on. Let's see if the pulley comes off. There we go. See, there's a wee pole on top here. Let's see what we got. Always inspect your parts. Cracks, dirt, whatever. Something causing this problem. The pulley looks good. It's a heavy big boy. Now on the water pump. I did spin it prior with the belt off. And I didn't feel any binding. Always has me worried. But like I said, $50 part. You know, the labor rate... At Ford now is ungodly, over hundred dollars, I think. And uh, then you got to get it there. Then you got to wait for it. Then you got to have transportation. The little shiny spot right there, and you rotate it, and it's not, and then it's shiny again. A red dot on that. I bet it's the original. And then we got one, two, three, and then one on the bottom. Four bolts, 10 millimeter. Our antifreeze has stopped draining, so you can't get it all out. I wish they had a block drain, because I, I know darn well that there's antifreeze up in the heads and so on still. So. We're going to make a mess. I'll have to get a couple pans out. And it's going to slop all over the frame, make a mess. So I got the belt out of the way. You can leave it down in there, but just get it off the crank. Anything below the water pump. And so I'll crack them loose, break them free, and then see if I can just gently pry the water pump by the looks of it. We'll probably have to have a sledgehammer to get it out of there. Um, I'll probably look around the edges there and see if I need to get out some air and blow that off, clean it, so we don't get debris inside. Well, I gave it a tap and I see it starting over here, so I'm going to leave that bolt in there. Yeah, I got a little gap. I just don't want to scratch anything against the block. They should have something. And the little ear sticking out would be nice. The block is cast, so I might be able to fit right in there. I don't know. Maybe I'll give it a little tappy tap some more. And then... We're going to replace it, so I'm not too worried about it. I just didn't want to do more damage like I just did. I cracked the plastic on the front here. Not a big deal, I guess. I guess. See, there's a little gap there. Do you see it? Right there. So maybe I'll pop this bolt out. And then... Just kept it there to hold it in case it wants to go for a ride. Doesn't look like it's going to go very far. And then 
we'll give it a wrappy on this side. Let's see if it'll come out or close that back up. Yeah, it's tilting the other way. Yeah, so we got a good bite on it now. See that? So I'm just going to work it back and forth. I guess I don't need any lube. It's just that O-ring probably holding it in there. pretty good what I'll do is pop this top bolt out I guess or should I do the wiggle test that yeah, baby's in there there's no movement so I'll get some pans underneath it pry bar hammer tap tap tappy tap because it's a press fit with a a um, oh an o-ring so it fits inside the bore instead of on the surface Okay, it came out enough to start leaking. You see why you want to take your belt off, right? And you hear it on my pants. I've used three tote tops, which should handle plenty of um, fluid. It looks good in green coming out of there. So I'm just going to let that drain a, little, a minute before I go crazy and pop it off. I don't want a flood coming out at me. Well, let's see if we get it the rest of the way off in there. There we go. Those pants down there are working pretty good. Let's see what we got inside here. The uh, the O ring is yeah it's still on the pump here. So I got to clean that surface up. I'll probably get a brush wheel. Or a scotch bright and clean that inside there and we'll let this finish draining and I don't have to worry about it tonight just let it finish there and I'll get the other pump going here and this is the seal I was expecting these veins to be a little more worn I thought it was something related right here you know this looks like it was leaking pretty good. Time for replacement. Alright, like I said, it's getting late. I think all I'm going to do tonight is clean this. Make sure this surface mating and this little chamfer is pit free. No rust and corrosion on it. And I'm just going to use a little brush wheel on the drill here. And uh, not be rough on it, just kind of zip in there a little bit. I think that'll do a good job. So I ran the drill around that. That cleaned up pretty nice. I know the light's not great here. But there's no pits or rust. Just got a little grease below it. I'm going to wipe this out again. It just keeps coming out antifreeze here. But um, I'll wipe this all up good again. And I'll put a little bit of... Lube on the O-ring as I slide it in and we'll put it in tomorrow. Well, it's the next morning. And yeah, a little more oozed out. So I'm just going to clean this surface again. I got a little brake clean here and then a rag. I'm going to make sure that surface is clean. We got the uh, part out here. What I did is I grabbed a hold of this and there's a little tiny rattle not a lot if this rain wasn't dripping out of the gutter here the water you'd hear it but it did have signs of leak here it looks like the seal was leaking um, but what I was thinking hearing that noise is I thought maybe the fins the bearing was so bad that the fins went over and touched the side of the housing but I don't see any of that so it's hard to condemn it totally but it was leaking 
And so, we'll set that like this. And then here's our new one. There's a part number. Motorcraft. And I think it was like $51. So it's not a huge amount. It looks like a little corrosion on the thing brand new. Probably where they weld, right? Hi, squirrel. What you doing? Kitty, what you doing? Didn't say hi. Um, so there's our new O-ring. It looks like those are welded on. You probably get corrosion. I would think they'd put desiccant or something in the box or spray it. So it does look exactly the same. And uh, what I want to do is put a little lubricant on that O-ring and we'll set her in. You compare your your bends and your, everything on it. Everything looks the same here. So I'll grab them bolts. They were all the same length. Hard to hold the camera, but I'll set it in. I'll get it square. I'll start the bolts, and then we'll pull it in uh, straight. So I'll go in slow and pull it in straight. And then um, i got to look up the torque spec. And with all these started, I should be able to... Pull this in evenly. I don't need this long extension on there. See it's starting to turn, so you want to go opposites. And then I gotta go get my torque wrench. It's uh, 18 foot pounds. And so it's not a lot, so you don't want to get crazy with this stuff. That O-ring does a seal. I see Tiger out here. Hey, Tig, what you doing? They're out here birding. You feed the birds, and then they go after the bird feeder. So you can't win here. Where's that bottom one at? Hard to see the bottom one. This is one of the easiest water pumps I've ever done. Ford did a couple good things as they. Put the alternators on top and the water pumps on most of them accessible here without tearing off a lot of stuff and feel a little bit of tension and how's that seam out there look not bad we're going to draw it in evenly we got about an eighth and eighth you can see the top a little bit and i'm not i'm hardly breathing on the tool here we'll just go in slowly Put a little lube on that O-ring. Help it to go in there. Can't really see the bottom bolt, but we'll assume it's there. Well, I'm going to set the camera down so I can hang on to this better. I'm going to zip them down and then get the torque wrench and torque them at 18 foot-pounds. Not very much. All right, I got it all torqued up to 18 foot-pounds. I couldn't hold the camera, too. I used my uh, Pittsburgh there. Not super accurate, but good enough for a water pump. And uh, now we're going to put our... Let's see here. We're going to put our pulley on the water pump, right? But before I do that, you see all the debris that went down in that grooved uh, harmonic balancer? I think I'm going to get some uh, water dump it in there and get that dirt debris that come out of this water pump and i'll take the uh spray gun spray that all off while i can get to it easier get that cleaned up tiger tiger tig what are you doing really he wants to help right well i splashed some water down in there i'm not going to blow dry yet because we still got to get the pulleys off and they're not in yet so Hopefully here in another hour they'll be here. Not sure if they're coming by mail. I'll check. All right, got them bolts started. Now I'll run them in. I think they're the same torque spec. All right, when we did that stethoscope little tool there, I couldn't hear any noise out of these. But listen to this. Keep that belt out of the way here. 
there is a little noise there. And like I said, we had that chatter that we thought originally, boy, we put it on the alternator and it was screaming. And then the same thing on this one is, listen to this. This is almost null. And then this groove pulley is a little bit. And play, rocking it like none. Over here on the left, none. And this groove pulley is plastic. And there's just a hair, there's a little. So I'm gonna take them all right off from here. The belt, this thing looks really good condition. I didn't think the noise was coming on that. Usually if you get real deep grooves, cracks, things like that on it, it would be the belt. And like I said, I replaced this belt, I don't know, a year ago or so. And so, uh, the kit that's coming has a belt. I could either put the belt on anyway, which I probably should, with the new pulleys and water pump. I hang on to this one for a spare, maybe. Probably what I'll do. All right, I got them torqued up. And what I like to do is roll it. Make sure there's no out of round. This has absolutely no play in it. The one that come off did have play. I could I could hear the noise go tick, tick, tick. It wasn't huge, but there was some play. So this is definitely tighter. Now I'm gonna get, uh, looks like a 13 mil. Take off these bolts, pull all three of these pulleys off. The two uh, backside pulleys and then the groove pulley. And hopefully the new parts will be here shortly so I can get this back together. Okay, all three are off here. You see them chatter marks there. Does have a bearing number. Turning it. Eh. I don't know. I kind of feel a little horsey. This one's a little smoother than this one is. This is the order they were in. So it's definitely not totally smooth there. There's no play in it. I don't know, it's possible I didn't put these pulleys on. I don't remember. Or maybe I, I don't know. I gotta look it up. I usually write it on a log and then I misplaced it. So I usually write down when I do brakes, when I do tune up, whatever, and oil changes. This one definitely feels better than this one. This one might have like a roller or something coming apart. And this one had a little bit of play on it. Grooves look good. There's got a part number. This doesn't doesn't feel like it's got any friction. But this one spinning it was the noisiest. But it's plastic. Uh, I'd have to say the first one. This one definitely the worst. And it's still not terrible. I mean, it turns easy. So they just go on that stem there, sticking out. And then I'm going to get the belt off. Hopefully, my parts are coming soon. We'll get this back together. We'll test it for any noise. Heard it when it's cold. When it's warm, I didn't hear it. But it's enough to, uh, you heard it in the beginning of the video there. I put the little clip in that uh, this thing was almost embarrassing if I went somewhere and left it. To test the uh, color and quality of the antifreeze, I wanted to put a tester on it here. And you line this horizontal, which makes this accurate. I shouldn't say horizontal. Vertical. And we got, looks like about 30 below. Looks like our parts are here, guys. Check it out. So I'm gonna 
get this together here shortly. All right, sorry about that. I got interrupted by the nice male lady. We chat every time I see her. So this is our kit. It is on Amazon. I'm not going to spend the bucks to get all four parts. This is TRQ. Let me get this open. Yeah, well, there we are. We're melting off and check this out. We've got, looks like hyacinth. We've got some chives. It looks like some lilies poking up. Yeah, definitely the lilies are coming up. We've got some daffodil over there. Looks like you're ready to pop. And then over here, where we had tapped the trees, we got us a little daffodils coming up. Spring's almost here, guys. Believe it or not, Easter right around the corner. So here's our pulleys. They look nice, obviously. Nice and smooth. There's our groove pulley. We're going to get these sit on there and torque them up. They're all torqued up. Absolutely no play on them. No noise at all. None of them. So now we'll put the belt on. All right, we got our belt on. Looks good. All Everything lines up. I usually bump the engine a couple times just to make sure the belt's seated before you just start it, just in case it's not exactly on a rib. Come out and check it. But back to this. We got interrupted when our parts came. We've got our antifreeze here at, if I can read it, 20, 29 below. No, it's Celsius. I usually like 35 below. So it looks pretty clean. I mean, it's green, but my guess is I'm going to have to put a little antifreeze in this instead of reuse the old. It came out about a gallon and a half or so that I collected. So when I top this off, I think I'm going to put, you know, in, instead of doing the 50-50 uh, mix, I'll put in straight like one gallon and that should bump it up here to about 40 below. It's probably 20 something, 25 below right now. Not quite enough for this area. So see the difference there. I'm going to put this in straight and we'll get this corrected. She's bubbling. So I squeeze the hose. And we can still add more. I like to squeeze that upper radiator hose because it'll get the antifreeze, get the air out, but get the antifreeze all the way down to the uh, thermostat. I had a YouTuber comment recently on uh, when I had a broken bolt here when we did the alternator. That bolt was right here, and this is the tube that goes back to the heater core. I think he thought it was the thermostat housing, which is on the right-hand side. Here's your upper radiator hose. Your thermostat's in here. Thermostat's not down in there. So, uh, I think he just, maybe I zoomed in too close. He didn't notice that. I still hear it burping. And she dropped quite a bit. So, I'm going to keep topping this off. And then I want to fill the jug up to the maximum cold. And then I'm going to fire it up. All right, we got the radiator topped off. I got the cap on tight. I burped as much air out of it by squeezing the hose as I could. I got my cable hooked back up because I disconnected the battery when I was monkeying with a water pump. And then uh, the belt looks good. I put water down in there to clean off the debris that fell in the grooves on the harmonic balancer. I think I'm going to start it and then I'll spray a little bit of um, brake clean on the belt just to make sure the dirt's off from it and then I'm going to Make sure we don't have any noise. I'm going to turn the heat on and we'll get this thing up to temperature to make sure the radiator's full and then we'll recheck our temperature setting. So now we'll just let it run. Sounds much quieter, doesn't it? Hope we're on the right track here. Radiator's full, it's up to temp. 
blowing good heat inside so I know there's no air in it and we're above the full mark it says cold fill range is down there we're just above that belt tracking looks real good it's nice and quiet quietest it's been a long time I'm quite pleased with it truck sounds pretty good right now so just a little quick one on a water pump I think this is one of the easiest water pumps I've ever done the um, alternators on top the pulleys are right in the open I mean everything is so simple on this and because it has electric radiator fans there's so much room right there that I think they had a great idea Ford did on that part but wish me luck hopefully there's no more noise when it's cold it didn't sound it when I fired it up so thanks for watching we'll see you soon